Hello, and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA simulation or a CPA exercise that deal with warranty expense or warranty liability. This topic is covered on the CPA exam as well as an intermediate accounting or financial accounting course. Now, if you are an accounting student or especially a CPA candidate studying for the CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com, where I have resources that's going to help you pass your CPA exam. No, I don't replace your Becker, Roger, Glime, or Wiley. What I can do is I can be a useful addition. I can be that additional supplemental material that's going to add 10 to 15 points on your exam. How? Well, the way I explain the material is different than a CPA review course. The CPA review course only reviews the material with you. They don't explain it. That's not their job. The job is to review it. They assume you have already learned it. I don't assume anything. So if you want to learn the material, you would learn it, then you will use it along your CPA course, and you'll be able to add 10 to 15 points. And here's my offer to you. Are you willing to check out my resources for $29, $29.99 a month? Try it for a month. If you don't like it, obviously cancel. This is your risk, $30. What is your gain? Your gain is passing the CPA exam. Are you willing to make that trade-off? Again, it's $29.99 per month, but you can cancel. So your maximum loss is $29.99. Now, for not for anything, check out my website to find out how well your university, on average, does on the CPA exam. I have score by overall score and as well as score by section. If you are an accounting student, I do cover many accounting as well as finance, audit, and tax courses. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. And on LinkedIn, you can see the student recommendations, what they read, what they write about me after using my material. Please like this recording and share it on YouTube. Connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's take a look at the problem itself. Adam Corporation in introduced a new line of commercial drones in 2021 that carry two-year warranty against manufacturer's defect. Based on their experience with previous product introduction, warranty costs are expected to approximate 1% of sales. Sales and actual expenditure for the first year of selling are as follows. Sales, 5.9 million. Actual warranty expenditure, 37,000. Uh, 750 and they're asking us three questions about this the first question is does this situation represent a loss contingency simply put we sold some drones 5.9 million worth of drones it's a new product we expect one percent of it to be uh to to be subject to warranty cost are we ha do we have a loss contingency do we have a potential liability do we have a warranty liability and the answer is yes why we are already told in the problem that we expect this to be 1%. Now, how did we come up with this 1%? Usually companies estimate based on prior experience, based on industry data, or just simply guessing. But definitely there should be a lost contingency based on the information that's given. Therefore, the answer is yes, it does represent a lost contingency. Question two, prepare the journal entries that summarize the sales of the drones and any aspects of the warranty that could be recorded during 2021. Simply put, journalize these entries. Well, here we go. We made sales of 5.9 million. That's pretty straightforward. We're going to debit account receivable 5.9 million, credit sales revenue 5.9 million. Is this all what we do? And the answer is no. Why not? We are told in the problem that we are expected to have a warranty cost of 1.1% of sales. Simply put, if we take 1% times 5.9 million, we're going to have a potential liability, warranty liability of 59,000. Now, we don't wait until this liability actually occurs. The day of the sales, so let's assume today's date is November 22nd. Let's assume we made the sale on November 22nd. Okay, so it's one contract. On the same date, what we do is we record the liability and the expense. So simply put, on November 22nd, we said we made the sale, but we have an expense too. That expense is called warranty expense. And that expense, it's going to be projected, not projected, accrued, to be more specific. Please strike out the word projected. Accrued, we're going to have to accrue warranty liability. So simply put, we make a sale. We debit expense 59,000, credit warranty, credit warranty liability 59,000. Why did we do so? We don't wait until the customers comes back for repair. We record the expense 
in the same period that the sale took took place so we don't wait until the actual warranty occurs so that's why we have to match the the, the expense with the sales revenue in the same accounting period now we are told too that actual expenditure were 37,750 so simply put we are told in 2021 we actually incurred 37,750 of expenditure so in other words the customers came back and they wanted to either repair their drone replace it replace some product of it maybe our engineers to our uh, not engineers our uh, uh, employees or maybe engineers to tweak something in it reprogram it whatever the reason is it cost us 37,750 well now when the customer comes back for repair what we have is warranty liability debited and cra cash credited it seems here what we're saying here we gave them cash that's what it seems but it doesn't have to be cash we could credit cash we can credit material we can credit labor whatever we incurred here it seems we gave them cash it's like okay here's the cash go fix it somewhere else or it cost us that much in cash i don't know but the point is it cost us that much now notice for this entry there is no expense so when the customer comes back for actual warranty expenditure of 37,000, we did not record any expense. Why not? Well, why not is because on November 22nd, when we recorded the sale itself, we recorded the expense for this. Now, so far, I mean, we're below our estimate. Okay, so we estimated 59 and we only incurred expenses so far, not expenses. We actually, yeah, we incurred in quote expenses of 37,750, 37, but again, we cannot call this 37,750 an expense because it, were, it was already called an expense. All what we're doing now is we are satisfying our liability. And let's take a look at question three. What amount should Adam report as a liability on December 31st, 2021? So basically it was just heading toward that place. So basically here's what we have to do. Let's create a T account, call it warranty liability. And initially, on November 22nd, I just made up this date, today's date, we had 59000 of warranty liability. Then, I don't know, this happened before the end of the year, we reduced our liabilities by 37750 Well, simply put, they're asking us, what is, the remain, what is our remaining liability? Our remaining liability is a credit of, if we take the difference, is 21250 so on the exam, on the CPA exam, you could be asked, what was the expense for the year? The expense is 59,000. How much is your balance and your liability at the end of the year? 21,250. So notice you recorded on your income statement 59,000 59, of expenses, because they could ask you, what is the expense? But the liability at the end of the year is 21,250 because we satisfied some of it. We satisfied 37,750 of liability. When we served that customer, when that customer came back and we served them, we reduced our liability. Now, at the end of this recording, again, I'm gonna make this offer. I'm gonna make this offer to you and, and tell you, look, if you're studying for your CPA exam, why don't you try my system for a month? That's all what it's gonna take you. $30 to try it. Yes. It's going to be $30. Are you willing to take that chance if the possibility is increasing your CPA score and passing the exam? I cannot be more convincing than that. All what I ask you is give it a try. Check out my LinkedIn account. Uh, connect with me and check out what other people say about my lectures. Anyhow, study hard. Good luck. And most importantly, stay safe.